learned a lot about processes that like I haven't really dove into before, and this was one of them. Um, so yeah, I've had a lot of fun experimenting with this. I did a lot of jewelry. Um, I could just pass these examples around. Can you, um, hold, can you hold it for the camera oh, first? Yeah. Um, and then I also experimented with um, the idea of casting game pieces. So I cast these um, little Make Haven robots, our logo. And then I wanted to um, try something more practical. So JR suggested um, a bottle opener. Um, and yeah, it, you'll see when you're, when you're holding this, um, the metal is a bit heavier than aluminum. Um, and it's also, it's not as soft as aluminum. So uh, for casting things like this, um, this is something that I'll definitely uh, stand up when, uh, to stand up for music. So all of these pieces started out as a 3D print. And um, after I printed them, I covered them in Bondo. And um, I also experimented with covering 3D prints and XTC, but that process takes um, a lot longer, it's a more expensive material, and um, it's not as easy to sand down as Bondo. So um, just one or two coats of Bondo and then um, sanding it with anywhere from 220 to 400 grit sandpaper, um, just as long as it's a fine sandpaper, it really doesn't matter. Um, it dries really quick, um, each layer. I want to say a layer will dry around uh, 10 minutes, and it's kind of um, kind of like soft and dusty to the touch. So um, you can really just once it gets to like a workable stage, you can spread it around with your hands. Um, it turns from kind of a paste to like a kind of a dry putty, um, and then it'll be all the way dry. So then, actually, this was glued down to um, a foam core mold to make the uh, to make this silicone mold. Um, so that's why it has a little bit of paper on the back. But yeah, so all the molds um, are really easy to make for um, the jewelry and um, the bottle opener. I just made a little foam core box. It can, it really doesn't have to look great, as you can see. Just the most important thing is that these edges have to be sealed. Um, so it's hot glued together, and then I just made um, a little extra seam of hot glue where the ends meet because you really don't want to pour it and then realize that the silicone's oozing out. Um, and by the way, the silicone that I used is um, Smooth On's Umu 25, and it's just their, I'm pretty sure it's their most basic silicone. Um, it, it's not meant to really deal with high temperatures um, specifically, but it does stand up to this pretty well. Um, if you're dealing with a metal that melts at a little bit higher temperature, they do make more uh, sturdy and like firmer silicones that can deal with that temperature. Um, but this metal that I used is a tin and bismuth alloy. It is 58% bismuth and 42% tin. Um, so the bismuth is what allows it to melt at that really low temperature. I think this one is 281 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so even if you didn't have this, you can actually do it on a stovetop. Um, and it's very, very easy to work with at home. And this, for one pound, was around $14 online. Um, and then, yeah, I've, I've only used two to make uh, like a small set of jewelry, um, these bottle openers, and the game pieces. Um, and I really, I did make quite a bit of jewelry, so it's, it's kind of hard to go through um, one and get really quickly. Uh, how much is a pound volume wise? Um, it's a little less than double of this. Okay. Uh, we did only order two, just because we really didn't know what we were doing with it. Um, but this is what we have left, and that's okay. what I'll be demonstrating with. Um, all right, I just want to make sure I didn't really miss anything uh, before this. Oh, by the way, um, it's kind of, um, it's not super easy to find something that's lead free. Uh, so when you're looking for this, uh, you want to look at those, um, the uh, chemical uh, breakdowns on um, the, the page.
page um, for when you're searching for these online, just because a lot of them have lead. Um, so you just, I wanted to be like super careful with this just so everything was safe. Um, so yeah, let me get this plugged in. And it's already a little bit molten because I had it plugged in before, but it was just oxidizing. So I wanted to unplug it while we waited. All right, so when I'm working um, with melting this, I do like to wear face protection because if any water comes in contact with this, there's a chance of a chemical reaction and it's splashing in any direction towards you, towards someone else. Um, so you guys are all a good distance away. Um, but ne that's never happened. I think it's, it's a rare chance. You have to be really just like be working with water totally around it. Um, so yeah, let's, we won't do that, um, but we will wear face protection just in case. Actually, JR, do you think it would be a, um, a good idea to get the document camera set up over here, or is it, or is it mounted over there? I can probably figure it out. Okay. You, you go ahead and keep going, and I'll grab the talk figure and see what I can do. Okay, um, so this melting pot is designed for lead, and um, the temperature range is from about the lowest temperature range is I want to say between three and four hundred. We have um, we have a manual over in our casting area uh, that breaks this all down. Um, so the lowest is three or four hundred. The highest is nine hundred. Um, there are no actual like mark temperature markings on this. It goes from low to two, three, four, etc., to nine to high. So it's a bit of a guessing game at first, um, and also. The temperature does vary at one setting. There's been times where I've had to work with it almost at three, and there's been times where I've had to work with it all the way at low for the entire time. Um, and so you just want to get used to um, recognizing like the viscosity of the metal, and you'll realize that um, you know if it's too hot, it'll be oxidizing a lot on the top layer, turning brown or different colors and there will just be like a lot of impurities on the top um, or if it's not hot enough like this it'll just be really thick and unworkable. So what I've experienced is when it's um, getting to the point where it's going to be almost oxidizing too much when you pour the mold it'll crack easily um, when it's cooling down. So we want to just find um, that, that sweet spot where it's kind of um, behaving well in the pot, not oxidizing too much, but it's still um, easy to pour. So yeah, it just might be a couple minutes for this to melt down. Um, obviously, you, you haven't melted the whole thing, so how do you get a smaller piece of that? Yes, so um, you could cut this on a bandsaw, but our metal shop uh, isn't running yet. So I have been using these pliers. They were just as good as like a proper forcep. Um, so I just get a good grip on them and then hold it in the pot until um, the amount of metal is uh, where, I, where I like it. I couldn't locate a long enough HDMI cable okay. in the moment, uh, so I just grabbed those glasses so and come up and take a look. Okay, sure. So yeah, just as an example of um, how this can vary, uh, right before this started I had it plugged in and set on low and it melted within a few minutes, but right now it's like still like a super thick paste, um, so I'm going to have to turn it up a little bit. Um, I've never really gone past three because then it just burns. Uh, so you just really have to keep an eye on it and see how it's been moving. What was that? What viscosity are you looking for? You just super smooth. It kind of has like a glassy mirror like finish on the top. Um, and then it's either that or 
you can like physically see pieces that aren't melted. Um, so it'll behave, it'll look like it's the correct temperature um, at a lot of different stages, but it could be too hot because it's oxidizing too fast on the surface um, or not be hot enough because once you go to pour it, you'll realize that it's already starting to firm up in the, in the um, spoon. So we're, we're getting close. this bottle opener because it takes the longest to cool. And um, before I pour, I do a dusting of, this is after shower deodorant. Um, it was the closest thing I, I could find to baby powder. Um, online it recommended a talc-based um, powder, um, but the cornstarch base works just as fine. Um, this scent is really annoying, but it, so. If this is here, um, I just found it at the dollar store, but if you want to get your own scent-free talc-based or cornstarch-based powder, um, it's definitely better to smell than this. Um, so I just do a light dusting. Just get a little bit in there and shake it around. And then I'll show you guys what kind of the ideal coating would be. Too much and you'll see kind of a texture on your print and um, not enough, and you'll see a different sort of texture. It'll be like kind of bubbly on the print. Um, so this, A, prevents that. <laughs> um, you'll, get a, you'll get a pretty smooth surface if you have the right amount of powder. Um, and yeah, it also preserves the mold, so it keeps it from, from burning too much. So you can see that the darker parts of this it's just from the mold dealing with the heat. I haven't had any like actual degrad degradation of like detail. Um, I think I've done around 10 or so pours in these smaller molds. Um, and also the good thing about this is that if you get a bad pour, you could just remelt it down um, and you'll lose very, very little material. Um, what you will lose is just um, the metal that came in contact and like stuck to like the impurities. Um, so that's another thing, if you use too much powder on the mold, um, there will be a coating that you, that will be stuck to it, and if you were to remelt it down, um, you will get impurities like, like this, that you'll have to scrape off. Alright, so you do want it pretty thin, so you can pass this around if you want to. And then um, one dusting usually lasts me around two or three pours. Just once I notice that um, they're not coming out as good, I give it another. I give it another pour. Carry on. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, the metal was just molten for that whole time, um, and it oxidated almost like not at all. So I'd say it's at a good temperature right now. Um, 
So before I pour, I like to scrape off whatever's on top to avoid getting that um, in the mold. Oh, great. Don't, yeah. Oh. The, so, so, the cord, so the cord, somebody dropped it and this okay. broke. So it has to be in exactly the right position, otherwise it'll lose power. So we have to resolder it. So I'd say get it in a good position and then All right, my let it alone. That looks good. All right. All right, so when I pour this, you'll notice that um, the material is really attracted to itself. And instead of being completely flat on the top, there will be a dome. So with this bottle opener, I poured one that I just completely left alone on the surface. Um, and then I poured one where I also kind of used the spoon to spread it out and make a flatter surface. Um, and choosing, choosing either of those um, methods just really depends on your design. Um, for the jewelry, I had to spread it out after each pour and then file off whatever was left. Um, and that's because this, um, this metal is heavy, um, a lot heavier than aluminum as I mentioned before. So, um, if you're going to be wearing it as jewelry, you want it to be as thin as possible. Um, and that's why just doing a pour and not touching it won't work. All right, so this looks pretty good. And um, for this, it's going to take around five minutes to cool down. Um, the mold does get a little bit warm, so you want to be careful with removing it. And then I'll show you how I cast uh, the jewelry. I'll show you the other way. I did it. All right, so see how um, this turned like a bunch of crazy colors? I might want to um, turn the temperature down just a little bit um, because that was kind of a short period of time from when I poured it to when that happened, so it might be too hot. All right, and this, it took me a while to kind of figure out that um, when casting like a really shallow mold, um, if you wait for just a few seconds, like five or so seconds, and then you remove some of the excess metal, um, it's a lot easier than just pouring it and then trying to take it all off because it does want to just stay as one mass. But um, as it's cooling down, you can kind of manipulate it a little bit better. This has a lot of excess right now. And it was able to come off pretty well. Um, so these you can pop out of the mold almost immediately after you pour them. Um, and with the smaller molds like this, you can get a uh, with a really quick system going. With this one, you do want to let it cool down for a while in the mold um, because it's cooling at a much slower rate. And if you try to take it out right after, um, it could crack because um, it's still warm. If you pour some in the mold, but you don't fill it up all the way, mm -hmm. then will it harden quickly so you can't add it? Like how long can you wait before you add it? Yes. So, um, if your mold is only partially filled, this this is like what happened to you with this, um, and you do need to add more. Once the molten metal hits um, the the already cooled metal, it'll all just melt again. Um, so that's kind of helpful for um, filling smaller details. Um, so I'll just I'll just show you with this. So my first pour um, may only get partly in one of these areas, but then. I 
I add a little bit more and then it will spread out nicely. What was that? So yeah, with molds like this, um, when you're kind of dealing with smaller spaces, it's when just like the little pouring spout on the spoon comes in handy. So those ones, um, the powder leaves like a very, very minimal residue. And then once you start um, filing and um, buffing with steel wool, you can get a really nice shine. Um, once those come back around, I can uh, demonstrate for you guys. Yeah, I can still feel this one's pretty hot. So I'm gonna leave it for a little bit longer. So yeah, basically what I learned is if you're dealing with really shallow molds, you can uh, kind of work with a really fast system of just pouring and dumping them out. Um, and you can get a lot of multiples really quickly. But with the ones with more mass, um, you are going to have to wait a little bit longer to um, you know, empty your mold out and start a new one. So these pieces that I removed from the mold um, that were excess, these ones since they um, they aren't you know the oxidized metal, they can go right back in. You do want to be careful when uh, putting the smaller pieces in. You don't want to drop them, obviously. So I kind of just push them into the spoon. I'm sorry, I feel like so I've, I've yeah, no, it's okay. but what, what determines what is worth putting back in versus what's not, or better yet, sure. how do you determine if it's oxidized or not? So these pieces, these pieces here are the oh, okay. oxidized metal that, um, I can turn it up so it can oxidize a little bit and then show you. So okay. when it oxidizes, it'll turn um, kind of a brown or a yellow. You can also put some under the camera and buy the CSC. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so the pieces like this, um, it'll turn brown or yellow on like the whole surface. And then that's when you want to scrape everything back before you pour. I usually do it anyways, just out of habit. Um, because it will, it will affect the color um, of your piece. You can have like little yellow spots or little brown spots in your piece if um, you're not super careful about that. Now, this piece that just went around had two bumps on it. Is that yes. for attaching 
or how to make the jewelry? So that was just a product of my design process. I tried to um, design these pieces with the holes for um, the other parts of the jewelry already in them. Um, but since um, I did my first cast and I learned that for the shallow mold I have to spread it around, um, it wasn't possible to um, keep the holes in the pieces. Um, so that is just from um, my, the way my design was sitting in, a, in the mold when I cast it. Um, but yeah, these file right off and obviously I could have, um, I could have gone back in and redesigned my pieces um, just as being flat, but I didn't really need to and I didn't wanna spend all that time, spend more time 3D printing using Bondo. Um.